Hi, I'm Minda Tracy from Maya Online Training Hub. In this video, we're going to look at how we can insert a slicer to filter the dates in this pivot table based on the year and the month. So first of all, I want to group my dates. So right click group and I'm going to group it by months and years. So now we have them grouped. I can go ahead and insert some slicers. Now, if I go up to the Analyze and then Insert Slicer, you can see I've got three, the three fields available. And you'll notice that actually in my source data, I only have date and volume, so only two fields. When I grouped the dates, Excel adds this new field for the years, and the date field is displayed as the month, and you can see them down here in the rows area. So I have a choice of which field to insert a slicer for. Unfortunately, I can't combine the years and the month into one slicer. I have to insert them individually. So we'll do that. Now, the first thing you might notice is the greater than and less than filters. Now, these are automatically put in because I've grouped my dates over here. And the best I can do is squish this slicer box up so that I can't see them. But unfortunately, you can still scroll to them. So that's one of the limitations of using this approach. I get these annoying greater than and less than filters that I don't really need or want. The other limitation is when I select a date or a period, I have to select the month and the year separately. I can't just click on one or a series of buttons or click and drag. And that doesn't tend to be a problem where your data just spans one year, one calendar year. But in my case, I have two instances of April. So let's look at what happens when I choose April. I get just the Aprils for both years. Now it's unlikely that you'll want that. And it becomes even more dangerous if you don't have the years field because what happens then is both April values are added up and your user may be none the wiser that that's happened. So for those reasons, I don't like the way these slices are separate and require you to choose from both of them in order to filter your data. So what's the solution? Well, a bit of DIY field creation. So we'll go over to our data and I'm going to put in a new field which just enters the year and the month. Now my dates here are in day, month, year order because that's how we do it in Australia. So what I'm going to do is in this new column, I'm going to use the text function to convert the date that's in column A into text. And I'm going to tell it the format I want, which is year, 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 and then month, month. So now I have a new column in my source data. I'm just going to refresh my pivot tables. And now I've got it in here. All I need to do is add this field as my slicer. I don't even need to add it to the pivot table. I can simply use it as a slicer. Let's get rid of these ones because they are no good to us. So now I have a slicer that has my year and month. I can click and drag to select a range of dates. And I don't have to click the year and then the month like we had to before. So let's just understand a little bit about why I've chosen to format it as year and month. And there's a very good reason, and that is if you format it year then month in a numeric format, even though it's text, Excel knows how to sort the dates in this slicer. But let's say you prefer to have your dates displayed as the month with the abbreviation for the name. Watch what happens to my slicer when I free refresh. All of a sudden it goes bananas, it doesn't know how to sort it, it's sorting it numerically and then alphabetically and it's got its knickers in a complete knot. So that is no good to us. And there is a workaround for this. If you want to use this format, then you have to set up a custom list and then use that to sort your slicer. But I think it's easier just to keep it simple and stick with this date format and then Excel knows what to do. The other thing to watch out for is you don't want to put your months first and then year because you get the same problem. It ends up sorting 2015, 2015, 2014, and it's sorting this number first, then the year. So it's sorting by month, then year, which obviously you're very unlikely to want that. So let's stick with year, month, all numeric, and gives you your 
year and month in the one slicer, all ready to go. And there's our old dates down there. That's just because if I look at the slicer settings, it's showing items deleted from the data source. So let's get rid of that. Now they're gone. Okay, so that is how to insert a custom slicer that combines the year and month into the one set of buttons that are easy to use. If you want to download the workbook for this video, head over to my blog and you'll find the workbook and all the step-by-step -step instructions with screenshots ready to follow if you prefer to read it and follow along. And if you're not signed up to my weekly Excel newsletter, then click here and join the list. Thanks for watching.